And here we go. <laughs> Oh, hello everybody what's going on this is ming chen i am uh out oh, here let's get fancy here i am here to share your podcast studio uh i am very honored and privileged and very happy to be talking to a dear friend of mine kitty duncan um she runs a celeb photo op business uh she is on amazon prime on a show called oddity files she's a badass she's a mother she's a podcaster She's most importantly a friend, and now she is an author. And <laughs> just, I and she has an amazing book out called uh, "I'd Rather Talk to Dead People: My Journey as a Paranormal Investigator." And uh, uh, thank you for jumping on with me. I really, I was like, "Holy crap, Kitsy wrote a book. We got to talk about this." Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me. I'm a grandmother now too, so we got to add yeah. that to the mix. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I, there's a, there's a, if you, you can head on Amazon and read a preview of the book. I think it's like the first four pages. And it said you didn't jump into the paranormal game until like your mid thirties. And I was, I was like, so last year, like I thought you were oh. in your own. So. Oh, that's why we're friends, Ming. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, as uh, our friend Christopher Hewitt says, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, yeah. She's wonder woman. That's, that is pretty much how I think of you. So <laughs> For thank sure. you you're sure. you're the superman to my wonder woman i i have a lot to go i have a lot more things to do before i get to that status but um yeah but author was um so was this a pandemic project or is, was this something you've been working on for a while it was, it turned out to be a pandemic project that I wasn't expecting. A good friend of mine and fellow paranormal investigator, Dave Schrader had texted me one day. He's like, have you ever thought of writing a book? And I'm like, well, not in a while. Why? Why are you asking? That's a really weird question out of the blue. And he's like, well, I've got these people that have this amazing uh, publishing company. It's called Beyond the Fray. And I really think you should get in touch with them. So I did. And it was the pandemic and my day job was, is null and void right now. So I'm like, well, you know, might as well. And I did. And I'm so proud of myself. I really didn't think I'd finish it. <laughs> I, I'm proud of you too. It's, a lot of people, myself included, you're looking at one of those people going, oh yeah, yeah. I want to, yeah, I want to write a book or I'm working on a book or, <laughs> or one day I'd like to write a book and then they never do it. Like I have not put pen to paper yet although i've i've uh um i've had several people go yeah you should write a book um the uh the publisher is uh, did did your publisher give you motivation or were like hey have you been did you write today um they gave me a deadline which was enough okay because deadlines are like a thorn in my side and i must meet my deadline so <laughs> that's why it got finished <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I mean, your your day job, the other job, uh, the celebrity photo op business called coincidentally celeb photo ops. Um, that one was very time based. Um, it's uh, you know, Chris Evans, one o'clock. Chris Hemsworth, two o'clock. Ming and Chen it happens, baby, right on time, including turning in my book a day early, I believe. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, did I wait to the last minute to throw it all together, you know, and like finish it? Absolutely. But I yeah. need, I'm that girl that needs the deadline so I can stress about it, stress about it. And then be like, Oh, I just got to do it. You know, that's me. Yeah. But that's awesome. Uh, a lot of people uh, uh, in our industry and uh, in the comic book industry always get deadlines and then they shoot way past them and they're like, Oh, and then <laughs> that's one thing, you know, about me. If I have a time period I need to meet, if I'm not meeting it, I am, a stress ball from outer space. So, yeah. What was your What was your writing process like? Did were you Did you get up at like five in the morning and were you like I must write between five and six? No. So during the pandemic, my husband and I decided to become glampers. So we got this <laughs> fifth wheel camper, and we got this little plot of land to put it on out by the lake here in Bloomington, Indiana. And when I wasn't walking the dogs around the campsite slash, I guess it's a trailer park because these campers really are trailers at this yeah. point. <laughs> so when I wasn't doing that, I was trying to, or, or writing for, you know, my 17 podcasts, right. I was 
writing for the book. So, and it was all experiences, fortunately, that I had filmed. So I had something to go back and reference if I was having a brain fart moment. Wow, that's awesome. And uh, this is all stuff you film for Oddity Files, which has been running, I think, 12 years? Uh, I've right? been investigating for 12 years, but it's been on Amazon for, I think, four at this point yeah. now. We've got three seasons out on Prime. It's myself, my friend Clayton Abbott, and my son, Carter Justice. And just recently, the band broke up. So what you see is what you get of the Oddity Files on Prime. So definitely check it out. It's a fun ride. You know, we don't go in and claim everything's a demon. We're like, we tell the spirits. We're there out of love, light, peace, and positivity. And we just want to tell your story. And these spirits, in turn, told us their story. There's nothing more that I'm more grateful for than the spirits trusting us with their stories. Right. Which is, um, which is awesome. I, so, you know, when I met you, I had no idea you had this other life as a paranormal investigator, uh, that you believed in the spirit world afterlife ghosts, uh, um, things like that. It wasn't until I think I saw some social media posts. It's like, whoa, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't really? Know where this is really, yeah, we, I, they, it just never came up. So yeah, um, well, I'm, first, I'm worried people are going to think I'm crazy when the first thing I'd say is, I hunt ghosts as a hobby, and I turned it into a TV show on Amazon Prime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, that sounds cool. And by the way, if you go into Amazon, just am plain Amazon, you type in Kitsy Duncan, like this whole, all this stuff comes up. So you have, uh, <laughs> like a, you know, kind of like, like an IMDb profile on there, and then there's Oddity Files, and then you have a book listing and yeah. um, you know, it's gonna go on from there to there. Like, how how cool is it to see your book on Amazon, though? It's so cool, and I, I'm not gonna lie. The moment I actually got to hold it in my hand, I just it, it made me very nervous because it meant that other people are gonna start reading it soon. Sure. And then I was I, I felt so accomplished and so grateful. Um, it's been said that it's very conversational. So Ming, you've known me for a long time, I and have. you know what conversations like with me are like it's a little bit of adhd mixed with a lot of ocd and that's what this book is and honestly the the moral of the story is ghosts aren't scary so i was terrified of this till i was in my late 30s and then once i realized they can't kill me they can't maim me they can't hurt me like poltergeist taught me that they could um <laughs> I was down to get all the information I could on this little genre that's out there. Yeah. If you see a uh, Zelda, I think Morgan Stern or whatever her name is, uh, yeah. Run the other way. But other than exactly. that, yeah. I, and all this, uh, this is, this is in your intro, which you can read on Amazon. If you need a taste, uh, if you need an amuse bouche before you buy the book. Um, yeah. I, you, you talked about living in um, like a haunted house. Uh, like the one house that was on the block that was like, oh man, that house is haunted. Oh but yeah. I and I didn't know till I was in high school. I mean, we was joked. There, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Was there, was there, were there incidents? So there house? was, we had this one ghost that would hide things from us, like very important things like car keys and glasses and things like that. And, you know, mom and dad would go nuts trying to find this stuff. And then like a day later it would show up exactly where they knew they would they had left it and had been looking for it. And then, you know, after a while, it was the running joke of the house when something would go missing. Mom's like, you know, don't worry about it. the ghost will bring it back. And I had a very overactive imagination as a child. Again, you've met me. I still have that very overactive imagination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so when weird things would happen, mom would just play it off like, Oh, honey, it's fine. It's just your mind playing tricks. And I believed her, thank God, because I'd probably be in a corner in the fetal position, you know, at 13 years old thinking there's a ghost in my room. But right. when the paper boy told me in high school that my house is the haunted house in the neighborhood, and he said, yeah, I saw a ghost in that window right up there, and he was pointing to my bedroom, I, I blocked it out immediately. <laughs> to be perfectly honest until I started writing this book. I'm like, Oh, you know, this kind of plays into it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm a wuss as well, but I believe, I believe um, I haven't had any encounters per se, but I, I just think that the spirit and the soul are so are too strong to, you know, not exist in, um, you know, in, in a different plane than ours or maybe a parallel plane or um, uh, all that. And uh, I, um, I, I've, 
got some friends who are spirit mediums and I believe in them. So we have uh, a mutual friend who is the best spirit medium out there. Check out Tiffany Rice. Rice. Everybody, she is, yeah, she's, she is an amazing uh, spirit medium for sure. So do you remember your first encounter or yes. uh, your first experience? Yeah. So um, it was the eighties. It was Griffith, Indiana, 1988. Picture it, if you will. I had a girlfriend spending the night. Mom and dad took my sisters off to softball practice. And my friend and I had bought a Ouija board at Toys R Us because, you know, you could back in the day. <laughs> so it's broad daylight. We're back out on the back deck and we had this full on spirit board communication. She swore she wasn't moving it. I knew I wasn't moving it and come to find out some of the things came true. Um, and then we didn't think anything of it. Mom and dad were coming home. We wrapped it all up, put it up in my bedroom till the next morning. I woke up with a loud, gruff voice in my ear saying, get out. And I'm like, um, Michelle, wake up. It's time to go. <laughs> uh, that's not a voice you you ever want to wake up to. No. Uh, like anywhere, even in your own house, in a hotel room in, in Nashville or uh, or Griffith, <laughs> Indiana, 1988. <laughs> wow. Well, when, um, so I, you said you're scared of ghosts. Like, when did you, are you still scared of them? Are you like, how did you get over that fear? So we're besties now, in case you didn't know. All the ghosts and I were BFS from okay, 12 right, years I got back. That. <laughs> um, but my dad, he's actually my stepdad, but to me, he's daddy. And my dad passed away at a really early age of 53 years old. It was sudden, massive heart attack uh, in the middle of the night watching IU basketball. So he went a very, very happy man. But wow, there were no Bob, goodbyes. Bobby Knight possibly caused it. Well, I never trusted that man. Just yeah. saying. Well, he, th he throws chairs, but uh, yes, please continue. <laughs> but uh, there were no goodbyes. There was no closure. So, I mean, I still, to this day, think about him all the time. And we'd moved down to Bloomington, which was very far away from where it all happened. And I, I started feeling a presence. I, I thought I was crazy. I thought I had lost my mind. Uh, but I wanted to know more. I wanted to know he was okay if that yeah. makes any sense. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I saw this commercial several times on, I think it was a sci-fi channel back in the day for the Kling brothers. And the commercial was these two guys just yelling at ghosts all the time. I'm like, well, that's not so hard. I'm going to give this a watch. And I realized they weren't getting hurt or maimed or killed. And there was just a lot of screaming from them at the ghosts and some lights flickering on and off here and there. So I drank in every single paranormal show I could find anywhere, did research online. And then I had friends, I met friends that had a paranormal investigative team and I'm like, let's do it. So, uh, so uh, since then you're going around abandoned buildings and uh, dark fields and uh, abandoned mental institutions. Much and basements oh, those and are my favorite yeah abandoned jails are the best man best energy there not really but <laughs> yeah i mean you don't even have to be there at night just seeing the peeling paint on the wall and just uh, you, i mean there's definitely um a sense of uh just a dread i guess and despair just by the nature of uh the of what those buildings held before um i've always been drawn to that aesthetic though the peeling paint the the door jams from like 1857. It's always just, I've been obsessed with it. So maybe that's why when I went on that first investigation, I walked into this uh, notoriously haunted location and just, it all felt right. Until one of the, the investigators yelled up the stairs, come at me, bro. And I'm like, okay, this, pl I, I feel right at home in here, but not with these people. So I went off and did it on my own. Right. Yeah. That's usually not something I would yell. Um, that's yeah. That's like Ray and Ghostbusters. Like get her. Like that was your plan. Get her. That's uh, yeah, that's, that's great. That's crazy. Um, so the, yeah. So the book um, was it, do you remember what was the toughest part to write? Um, the into why I've gotten into this because it's you know opening old wounds and things like that. But the actual investigations, 
were so much fun to revisit because even after the ones I'd put up on Amazon Prime, I, I watch it once they're up and then I, I don't really revisit it. Uh, but I had to <laughs> for this book just to get some quotes from Clayton and Carter and myself. Um, and it's it's it just feels good because these this is going to sound crazy, but I am crazy. And you know that. Yeah, just say it. Just say it. These spirits taught me everything I know about paranormal investigation. It wasn't the TV shows. It wasn't reading articles online or reading books. It was the spirits showing me the way. And our very first episode on Amazon Prime is a spirit teaching us new ways to communicate with the dead. We've had an experience where the spirits have investigated us in return. Right. It's it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I've gone to some places that are, you know, allegedly infested with demons. And those spirits have taught me that they're not demons, that they're doing this because that's what's expected of them. And I, in turn, said, well, don't do it if you don't like it. <laughs> I mean, that usually makes sense for pretty much anything. Uh, a lot of people don't listen to that. But um, right. are there... Um, are there hotbeds of paranormal activity uh, where you are now in Bloomington, Indiana? There's a an old legend and lore called Step Cemetery out here. It's the so I'm, I have a big rule. I don't like to investigate outside because I'm more scared of people than I am the ghosts. So I'd right. rather be in a nice little enclosed building where I know no people are. Uh, but that's the only place I'll investigate outside. And it is just as haunted as the stories say. There's a lady there who lost her son, Lester, and she hangs out on the stump, the tree stump that's there. And she waits for him and cries for him. And the last time I was there with Clayton, I actually felt her sadness and started crying for absolutely no reason. Yeah, the uh, her spirit was 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 just there that's a that's amazing do yeah. you you have a favorite place you like to go and investigate yes so there's lake county indiana is where i grew up and there's an old jail there the, the one that actually john dillinger bro broke out of back in the day you know public enemies oh. all that stuff yeah, yeah, yeah and it's called the old lake county jail and sheriff's home right off the square in crown point and it is i will go back any chance i get i love it so much i actually kind of had a, a turning point in my paranormal investigative career with al capone's ex-hitman so wow. yeah I'm, yeah james fur sampson he uh i was terrified of him that's when i was still scared of everything that went bump in the night and he taught me that sometimes spirits feel connected to you in a good way and they just want to connect with you. Yeah. I think I'd be scared of him like alive or dead. Oh. So that's, <laughs> that's definitely what it's, uh, yeah. what it's uh, yeah. like. That's uh, wow. So you're, you're missing getting some pretty, pretty cool characters then. So you're, you're researching backstories. You're going into history. Yeah, not always. So I am I am an evidence nerd. Speaking okay. of Ghostbusters, my spirit animal is Holtzman. If you go the 2016 Ghostbusters, yes. I, I love to gather the evidence. I love the techie stuff. I love it all. Um, so our show isn't a lot of backstory. It's what we find out while we're there. And right. some of these locations have historians there that'll back up the evidence we got with the actual history of the place as well. So it's really neat. All right. So yeah, sometimes you'll discover things, bring them back and be like, Hey, we saw this or we felt this and the historian like, Oh yeah, well that of course you did because this happened. And so, exactly. all right, so you, don't, you don't do, you don't, sometimes you just go in cold then. Yes. Yes. I like to know where the hot spots are. So I'm not spending the end because we only get one night there. It's not like the oh, yeah. cable shows where they spend oh, yeah. a week. They, they get a week and they get, you know, they, they get it all set up for them. Like, no, no, no. It's like, here, well, you're on your own, but you get one night. Yep. We get one night and it's the three of us. And there literally is no big camera crew following us around. We each have a camera and we hope we get the best shots. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of running around with our, like chickens with our head cut off. We're kind of a go with the flow investigative vibe, whatever's working, we'll stick with it until it doesn't anymore. And then we move on to the next theory or equipment or things like that. 
Yeah, that which which is cool. I think you know if you have big crew, you got huge lights. Like you're not. What are you gonna get? <laughs> like what what yeah. spirit is gonna hang around for that for sure? Yeah, cool. and what I think we get some great evidence is because it's our energies. We're all believers, but we're skeptical believers, so we're not afraid to debunk something as not being paranormal. And we will, you know, it's like, oh, you heard a footstep. That was actually me shifting my foot over here. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're realists, but we believe and our, our energy wasn't any malintent. And I believe yeah. the spirits knew that. Yeah. It's like, see this thing that looks like my fingerprint. No, that's a, that's a spirit. Like, no. <laughs> exactly. That orb. Oh, you mean dust? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, that's for, I'm not texting. I'm literally buying the book right now. So it says mm -hmm. if I buy it now, it'll be here on December 6th. So, uh, oh, wow. That's two right, days. I've, I've placed my order and thank you. Your order has been placed. So I suggest everybody watching also buy this book. Uh, I, I was just make, making sure my home address didn't go up there. That's the office. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're good. So it's supposed to be delivered here on Sunday. So um, I'll, I'll be reading it all throughout December for sure. It's so, a quick read. That's one thing I will say about this book. It's like 150 pages. Like okay. I said, super conversational. It, it'll be like I'm sitting there next to you telling you this story. Yeah. And I love uh, if you've been watching Oddity Files, uh, it, see, it sounds like it's almost like a companion guide as well. Um, yeah, it truly is. So it's a look inside my head. I mean, there's uh, there's two main <laughs> chapters. One is at Culbertson Mansion in sure. New Albany, Indiana. And then another big chapter is Bobby Mackey's, which is, you know, notoriously known for demons. It's in Wilder, Kentucky. It's an old honky tonk that's still open for business. Um, but those were the two most prominent locations uh, where we connected with us. Well, I personally connected with the spirit from the moment we walked in the door till still, because both of those spirits followed me home. Right. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I am. Um, so we, we traveled the world doing a lot of conventions. Did you ever go off on off hours and investigate? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's where yeah. you were. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you know what? We have zero budget. So if, we're already here and all three of us are working this show. We'll head on, we'll grab an Uber, take a 30 minute drive out to this location, do an investigation. And we'd usually stay over and do it because I need my sleep. <laughs> and I'm yeah. crabby enough as it is during photo ops. Um, well, it's probably yeah, dealing, not good. Uh, dealing with the, the, the mass public uh, is quite stressful, especially in your <laughs> profession where <laughs> you deal with uh, multiple, multiple personalities. Uh, some of those personalities all into one person at times. Yes, and, it's literally why I'd rather talk to dead people. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And so you, you, you have a, you have a, you have a, uh, you know, a cache of high-end photographic equipment. Um, have you ever captured? Have you captured anything on film that you're like, huh, that's. That's yeah. that's OK. I figured <laughs> I've had moments where I didn't get it on film, you know, early on where I'm still trying to figure out how these cameras work and things like that. But again, one of the reasons Bobby Mackey's is such a big deal to me is because we had started off the night in the upstairs apartment that's there that used to be a speakeasy for the mobsters back in the day. All the ties back to the mobsters yeah. growing up in the Ohio Valley. Um, but I had seen this glowing head shaped ball of light about the size of my head, which is a huge head, by the way, it kind of peeked in around the corner of the doorway and yeah. backed out. And fortunately oh. Clayton was in front of the door shooting his face with the camera and he kind of captured it in between his head and the, and the camera. And what you actually saw was a hand go around the door jam, the head peek in, go back out, and then the hand leave. It was wow. phenomenal. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Was I scared? No. Could I speak? Absolutely not. I just went, shh. Yeah, you see something like that. Uh, yeah, that would render you speechless for sure. And then, yeah, then you get, then you have to process it. And then by the time they they may they're they're probably long gone. But um, <laughs> I mean, that's something you definitely don't forget, though, for sure. No, no, not at all. And I, I immediately I told the guys what was happening, and then I, I told the spirit. I said, 
I am so sorry if I scared you. That was not my intention. I am just so happy to meet you right now. Oh yeah. That's that's amazing. Um, is there do you have any do you have places on like on like a list that like you'd like to go and investigate? So many. Uh, number one is the White House because I oh, think it was Theodore Roosevelt or somebody back in that old timey period saw the ghost of Abraham Lincoln walking the halls, which I mean, a conversation with Abe. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, by far. Uh, so many questions or absolutely. Or, 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 I could just hear I, I could just sit there and hear him listen to him talk for sure. Yeah, I, um, absolutely. Yeah, I imagine the White House is fairly inaccessible. <laughs> to yeah. paranormal yeah. investigators, but they they sh they should let you guys in. What a great! Oh, you know I appreciate <laughs> that train of thought. I do have a backup plan. I'd love to go to Alcatraz or the Winchester Mystery House. Yeah, both. Um, so uh, I've been to the Mystery House. Yeah, there's something definitely going on there, and yeah, and oh. Alcatraz has just got such a crazy story. Um. I, in my mind, I was like, "This shouldn't even really be here," but <laughs> uh, but yeah. it is. It's so cool, yeah. though. It's it, and it's. I love. How I have to take a boat out to it, and it's got the uh, the indigenous American ties to it, and, yeah. and then you've got the prison ties to it. So, and prisons are the most intense energy. Doing this as a paranormal investigator that you will ever run into. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, a lot of emotions just being left there, either uh, yeah. just from the the people who have been there, or uh, maybe um, you know, prisons usually have their own morgues, so people do die there. And there's a, there's, yeah. it's definitely uh, things I've been left behind for sure. That's amazing. Absolutely. Um, do you see other book? Are there are there other books on the horizon? Did you did you have fun writing this? Where are you? Where are you? Like, hey, I think I think I want to do more. I, I did have a lot of fun doing it. So I'm hoping so. I just need to get out there and, and have some more life-changing experiences so I can write about them for sure. But since the band is broken up and um, it is just me right now, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to switch things up a little bit. Okay. And for the longest time, I said, you know what? I would never investigate somebody's house because at the time I thought, you know, everybody wanted their house cleansed like Poltergeist. And I, I didn't want to try that. I didn't want to do that because I was afraid I'd send some lady from a brothel off to live in like some kindergarten class. And then, you know, all hell would break loose and that would end uh, badly for everybody. Pr uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Two things may or may not mix, but, uh, you know, maybe she likes kids, though. Yeah, uh, could be. <laughs> But you know. my thing is now, because I, I grew up and for so many years was so terrified of this, I kind of want to help people that are dealing with hauntings yeah. and let them know that it's not so scary and maybe be like a conduit between the spirit world and to them and, and kind of come to a conclusion on why they're there. Maybe it's a relative that just had a message. Maybe they felt no closure when they passed or something right. like that. So I think that's the next step I want to take. And if people are dealing with like uh, hauntings in their place of work and things like that as well, I, 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 I'm, I'd like to want to talk to real people too. So maybe if I go that route, it'll, it'll re re up my thoughts on people are disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be cool. Um, do you get a lot of people who are like, Oh, you're crazy. Ghosts don't exist. Like that's, that's, yeah of crap uh i don't do you what do you tell them you know more often than not honestly though people believe and a lot of people have had experiences uh, you know you get the naysayers and i'm like you know what I, I i respect your opinion you should probably come with me so you can see how this goes down but i think most people that don't believe are scared of it right yeah i i agree with you but yeah i'm like oh yeah tough guy like here Come, uh, come to the uh, the Penner's Asylum with me, uh, yes. one time in uh, in Pennsylvania, um, which I think we all went to uh, after a convention at one point. We did, uh, we did, and that's that, talk about some, uh, you know, no pun intended, but some insane energy there. It was just kind of all over the like when you go into a prison, it's just everybody's angry when you walk in, oh, yeah. but this, it was just all over the charts. We got, we did a quick little investigation while we were there and got some amazing 
uh, evidence, sorry, brain fart there, uh, as we always do, but I'd love to spend some time at Pennhurst, not going to lie. Yeah, that's cool. And it was, it was pretty chaotic. I think when we were there, it was right before Halloween. So it was set up as a kind of a haunted experience, um, yeah. like a commercial haunted experience. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if you snuck off to another wing of the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the vast. I did. Okay. I figured. <laughs> Corey hooked me up. <laughs> yeah, you were there. You were there already. You were there already. You got it. You got it. I mean, you got to go find, uh, you got to find <laughs> whatever's there. And, uh, yeah, for sure. That's amazing. I um do you do you have any words of advice for anybody who would like to write a book and needs to get off their ass and do it? Um, you know, get off your ass and do it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you know what? Just come out. This sounds so lame and so high school, but come up with an outline. That's what I did, so I knew where I wanted to go with it. So literally, with like the big Roman numeral one, like mm -hmm. book two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter one, yes. touch on this, 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 and this. It leads to you have a you're pointing yourself in a direction. It's actually not a bad idea. It worked in it worked in second grade, I guess. So why yeah. wouldn't it? Work? No. All right, that's that's interesting. Okay, I'm, <laughs> it's I, it's so obvious, but it works. All right, I was really asking for myself, but you know, you you I maybe some other writers out there which is uh which is pretty awesome so i'm a little um, bit of an empath mixed with psychic medium i totally knew you were talking about yourself oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. well congratulations on this it's pretty cool um, to have uh, an actual published work and uh, yeah i can't imagine you know opening up that box and there's a physical tangible book with a cover um which uh you were jokingly is like oh yeah that's my ass cover so that's uh yeah, yeah that's, that's actually not my ass. I don't know whose it is, but really? she's giving me goals now. It looks just like me, except with a better ass. <laughs> I I would argue I would I I mean I would put it side by side. I don't know whose butt that is, but uh I don't either, but it's nice. I mean, you haven't seen my pandemic ass. We're just putting that out oh, there. So <laughs> I've definitely you know, all that running around in, on con floors. It's uh, it's good. It's not a bad thing. What does it? It's not a bad thing. And um, you know, and your other life. Yeah, I want to. I really want to thank you because half the photos in here you've you've taken or a member of your team have taken. So I think this one. Uh, oh, you know, I gotta thank you for this one. Um, yeah, <sighs> Philly, right? Yeah, Philly, back back to the future. I think either you or your daughter took this one, but um, I think that was Cassie. Yeah, for sure. Or Cassandra, as she goes by now. Cassandra, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's fantastic. So I um, a couple of shout outs here. Uh, Nisa Lopez, our good friend uh, from mm. the community world, and just you know from from our, from personal. Uh, I remember, we all went to Penhurst, and it was it was pretty crazy. So. And uh, I think that this Angie Bender, two two of my favorite people. Oh, Thank you. I love you, Angie. God, I miss and, everybody so much. Uh, Corey's watching. Uh, you know, it's it's been pretty amazing. So, uh, definitely pick up this book on Amazon. I ju I literally just did. It's uh, it's it's the price of a couple of Starbucks frappuccinos for sure. And really, get, it's dirt cheap. I'm not gonna lie. And I think the Kindle version's four ninety nine right now. Oh really? Okay. Well, you know, read yeah. it digitally. I need, you know, I needed the hard copy. So it's, uh, yeah. Well, you know, in, in the end it's fun. It's fun seeing your friend's names on stuff, like something like a movie, a oh, book. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, a poster, a wanted, not a wanted poster, but. Well, we've got some friends. You never know that Corey, I'm telling you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, what are you working on now? Uh, I just saw, I think I saw an Instagram post, I think. Uh, so you are working kind of in the convention world. It's all virtual now, unfortunately. Or, if, you, know, I, it, you know, it's good that everyone's trying to keep going, which is good. So, yeah. Um, is there anything yeah, you so want we've got Christmas Con coming on uh, this weekend and next weekend. If you go to Celeb Photo Ops, any of the socials, uh, we've got the link to buy there. Other, we did a couple of Bruce Campbell events this past summer at drive-ins. Oh. Everything was, you know, socially acceptable. Masks were worn to the last minute. It was a good time. Actually, Bruce is why we bought the camper. I told Mike, his manager, I said, you know what? You get us more of these gigs. I'm buying a camper and I will follow you across the country. So we did. <laughs> wow. And and uh, I'm, I'm thinking you can't buy a camper on Bruce Bucks. 
but I guess you can. You sort of did. So you know, <laughs> handing out that that Bruce money, but um, oh, we financed it. It wasn't all Bruce, okay. but was yeah. Bruce okay, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, good luck to you. Thank uh, you, you the- too, in your new venture. You're at a fancy new place, Bell Works. I'm in love with it. Oh yeah, you would love it. And I, you know, that place dates back to I, th- I believe '64, if not before. So there, and it's it's a two million square foot building. I uh, yeah, if you know, maybe when this is over at some point, I would, I you know, I can get you into some back hallways. I know there's some spirits there. Um, I don't know if anyone's actually died there or anything or passed on, but I I know I I've been there. I've been there pretty late at night, where it's just me and a couple of security guards in this gigantic building. And I'm running around. I, you, you feel you feel things, and there oh, are yeah. some weird '60s era hallways that look like they've been untouched since then. So, um, oh, that's amazing. The, the place is just massive. I think you would you would love it. I mean, you would love it anyway. But I think you would love it. You would love uh, exploring did, it. For did sure. you hear that voice? That wasn't you. That just came through. I did not. So it was a male voice, very deep. <laughs> okay. Ask the security guards about it. Maybe your office is haunted. Just saying. I, um, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it, especially the, the number of things that go missing in here. But that's usually just me repla- uh, misplacing things. So, um, are there other pla- uh, Amazon? Are there other places you point to uh, to get the book, or is Amazon the best place? Amazon and Barnes and Noble online. It's available, and if you go to flow dot page slash Kitsy Duncan, all the stuff and all the things are on there. I've got a couple podcasts that I do. And um, it gives you direct links to Oddity Files on Prime and direct links to the uh, the book as well. That's awesome. So, like, you could you could go all Kitsy Duncan for the rest of the year. You watch Oddity well, Files, you can listen to all the podcasts. You can you can be all set. And um, just and search hashtag the- awkward prom, and you're set for another three days. Oh like- my god, yes, that's I think uh, yeah, there are a couple of. Uh, a couple photos of us in there i'm proud to be part of the awkward prom series for sure you're probably the most returns i would guess i i, I should hope so but i mean you got some pretty cool people uh awkward <laughs> with you for sure um yeah well good luck with with all of this and uh yeah thanks for thanks for chatting with me i just i really wanted to get this out there and uh and just hear your story about it so thank you I appreciate you, Ming. Thank you so much. And know that I miss that face so much. We'll be back at it soon. We'll be back. I have a good feeling. Thank you, my friend. Kitsy Duncan, everybody. Uh, Go just go buy the book. Go buy the book. We'll talk to you and uh, you'll thank me later. (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kitsy.